This story is from my time as an untamed Edinburgh comprehensive student some 20 years ago. It revolves around three teachers during the annual Secret Policeman's Ball. I'm going to call these teachers Mr Mercury, Mr Joel and Mr Webber. Okay. <clears throat> now, for specific reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, this annual show had been organised for many, many years by Mr. Joel and Mr. Weber. And as a piano player in a local wedding band, Mr. Joel oversaw the musical direction and each year played the closing number, usually a big sing along. Mr. Weber, on the other hand, was someone who yearned for the stage, but somehow instead found himself teaching history. <laughs> <laughs> True of many history teachers. He poured his frustrations about this into writing, staging and directing the performance each year. Mr Webber loved his gadgets and invested a substantial amount of the box office takings on them each year. Such as walkie-talkies to shout curtain directions, smoke machines and strobe lights. This particular year, he'd put the money towards renting two huge glitter cannons to fill the school hall with confetti during the big musical finale of the show. <clears throat> I what? like him already. What? This is good. Mm. Glitter yes. cannon man. Yes, yes, absolutely. Mr. Uh, Webber, what? Mm. So I didn't really have Matt down as a glitter cannon man, but you know, well, never, you'd have been never wrong, mind. Nice. <laughs> I'm sorry. But do carry on, Mr. Mr. Webber really wanted to uh, top the last year's show, which had been um, a Britney Spears esque head mic spectacular <laughs> that allowed Miss Katrina, the gym teacher, to do an athletic and slightly terrifying rendition of Walking on Sunshine. It really did give everyone present an appreciation of how hard it is to actually dance and sing at the same time. Mm. <clears throat> Good old Miss Katrina. I also played drums uh, the year before with my band, Burn the Diary, which sadly hadn't gone down so well. Someone had unfortunately misspelt the name in the programme as Burn the Dairy. <clears throat> and as the country was in the midst of the foot and mouth crisis, we got a few complaints. <clears throat> It was, however, the new teacher, Mr Mercury, who had really stolen the show that year. He'd done a blistering rendition of Queen's I Want to Break Free and, as it turns out, was actually an amazing singer and guitar player, much to the annoyance of Mr Joel. Mm. So, come the next year, there was a bit of a personnel coup. My band, having been deemed political agitators, weren't allowed to play. And as Mr Joel wasn't as young, handsome or as talented as Mr Mercury, he was also unceremoniously dropped from the bill by the director, Mr Webber. Instead, we would all form the house band seated at the bottom of the stage and next to the glitter cannons. Yeah, exactly. Mm. The upshot was we had to spend hour after hour, looking up at Mr Mercury, prancing around as he rehearsed his big final number of It's a Kind of Magic. Mr Joel was furious that we were all doing the hard work off stage and kept sniping and calling out things like, You're a little flat there, Mr Mercury. Or, The lights clearly aren't capturing the emotion of the song, Mr Webber. <laughs> Nerves were definitely frayed. Ooh. Father Simon, I really should start my apologies about now, because, you see, I failed to mention to Mr Webber that the glitter cannons, which were right next to my drum kit, clearly said, not for indoor use in any circumstances. <laughs> <clears throat> it was, I know, a pretty reckless thing not to tell the teachers, but in my defence, I just wanted to know what would happen, and I hadn't bought them in the first place. The glitter cannons were due to go off after the little a cappella section at the end of the song, where Mr Mercury would lean over wink at the audience and sing It's a Kind of Magic, Magic, at which point I would hit my cymbals, Mr Webber would give the performers and the audience a light dusting of glitter, and then Mr Joel would play a big piano solo to see out the show. Sadly, that's not quite what happened on the night. How was I to know that the explosion would be quite so huge and quite so terrifying or that it would turn the school into a scene from a war movie, albeit a pink and purple <laughs> war movie. I was surprised as anyone that the now very sparkly parents would create a stampede for the door, and I certainly didn't expect the blast to physically, actually, knock Mr Mercury clean off his feet <laughs> in a cloud of glitter. 
Neither did I know that he had such a varied vocabulary to express his displeasure of what he thought was clearly an attempted glitter murder by a jealous Mr. Joel. Admittedly, I was less surprised by Mr. Joel's own floral use of anatomical terms aimed at Mr. Webber, who was now cowering in the corner, glitter detonator still in hand. <laughs> However, with the teachers verbally expressing themselves and everyone running for the doors, it's what the band and I did next that I seek forgiveness for. Oh. You see, we just carried on with the song, with me taking over Mr. To Joel's piano part with an improvised five minute drum solo. Oh, yeah. Mmm, they're always so interesting. We jammed away like that quartet on the Titanic as the show sank around us. There were no real repercussions for anyone after the show, as far as I know, so I don't seek forgiveness from the teachers or from the other performers. Although there was a little patch of scorched glitter that remained on the hall roof for many years that I did feel a little bit bad about. It's really taking over Mr. Joel's solo that I seek forgiveness for. Stealing a solo really is breaking one of the golden rules of rock. I throw my guilty but glittery hands at your feet in search of mercy. Well, it's an interesting thing, but if you take in a glitter cannon into the school and then place it by the drummer, I think you're asking for trouble. And it wasn't Andrew who actually set them off and it did clearly say don't use them indoors anyway sister bobby will come down like a ton of bricks i think yeah it's difficult because i loved it and it's very funny and you got caught in teacher wars there which wasn't your fault that was their childishness really and their ego so that was nothing to do with you also like you said buying the cannons you i can never knew buy. there were teacher wars i always thought teachers all loved each other well yes but, um, mm. the, uh, the you can get indoor confetti cannons they're really you know you just have to ask for the right one so basically that's teacher and buyer error as well so that's not your fault uh, having said that what is your fault and you should know by the firework code you're a teenager you should have had the firework code drummed into you for many years that really it's the same kind of thing you can't you should have said right? you should have, yeah you could have been the bigger person as well you should have said yeah. doesn't matter that you're the youngest you should have said because you just never know it could have really done some damage so you're not forgiven for that however you are forgiven for stealing the drum solo from your egocentric teachers because the other thing is i don't think drummers get enough attention so you're forgiven on that count well, I, I'm confused. Is he forgiven or not? Well, it depends on which bit you're talking about. Well, the, the whole thing. Well, he's not yes forgiven no. for the firework, indoor firework. Is he display. forgiven or not? No. He's not forgiven. All right. We had an English teacher who got on very well with a PE teacher. Yeah. Yeah, I know, I'm not quite sure. Did he get married or anything? No. I don't think Great I believed in that kind of thing. Yeah. Anyway, uh, what do you think, novice? <laughs> um, well, they're a rare breed of drummers, aren't they? And uh, I think Keith Moon would have loved this. Uh, so, Andrew, you know, the fact that... That's what technical rehearsals are for. They obviously didn't have a technical rehearsal because otherwise you would have always gone through things like this. And, he, you know, he was just looking at it and thinking, well, this could be exciting, and it certainly was. And I think the fact that he jammed away, because old Mr Joel obviously legged it, and also it sounds like half the audience had legged it as well. So, I mean, that was a great time to improvise, and it sounded like he improvised brilliantly. And I think anyone of his age uh, would have done just the same. Any drummer, anyway, because they're a rare breed. So, absolutely, Andrew, you're well, forgiven. They're certainly not inclined to uh, <laughs> duck the spotlight if it comes their way. Brother Matthew, I what mean, are you saying? a technical rehearsal. I mean, I, speaking uh, for myself, you can only really use your glitter cannon once, That's and then true. it's gone. You know, you've got to you, 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 you save it for the big night, save it for the show, as as they say in the biz. <laughs> uh, a five minute drum solo. Yawn. No thanks. No, never I, so, a good I, thing. I remember seeing uh, Roger Taylor, ex of Queen, mm. uh, in his own band once, where he and the drummer both did solos for about half an hour and the queue to the bar went quite a long way so i'm <laughs> going to say uh forgiven <laughs>